Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here dropping in on you. Hope everybody's having a great week. I hope everything is going as planned. Look, I'm not going to be long. I'm preparing for uh, an interview and I just wanted to drop in and talk with you guys. Um, before I get started, it's a reminder, we, we are still in the middle of a fundraiser for the Black Man Lead Rite of Passage Initiative, which is also includes wraparound services for black males uh, into adulthood up to 30, and in many cases beyond. Uh, everything from mental health resources, skills, training, job, uh, job search assistance, uh, but most importantly, we are really working on properly socializing young boys uh, to prepare them to become effective, powerful uh, black men uh, because that's so desperately needed in the community right now. Again, I'm coming to you after being informed of another situation in which a young black male has taken, senselessly taken the life of another black male, this time a 57-year-old black man who took on a side gig as a security guard to make ends meet. And the young kid just walks up, blasts him. Uh, what looks like, uh, authorities are saying, looks like uh, some sort of attempted robbery. Fortunately, they eventually caught the kid. Uh, but nevertheless, we are going to have to face the fact that we have literally spent so much time in a system without adjusting and healing uh, that the dehumanization of us as a people has become uh, an exercise that we have taken on ourselves. We dehumanize one another. We do not see the value in human life. And much of that is because many of these young boys and young males don't see the value in the, their own life. They don't see anything in themselves. They don't see uh, anything worth living for. So they just go until their time comes. And that's sad because they are needed. There are some that are incorrigible. There are some who are recalcitrant. There are some that are beyond our reach and they need to be dealt with. Uh, but for those who can be saved, those who can be transformed, those who are still uh, uh, palatable and moldable, those are the ones that we definitely need to be working on. We need to stop trusting uh, the uh, education, public education system to prepare them when the public education system is designed to herd them into prisons. I've written on that in uh, the disproportionality of uh, special education as a weapon. I have written on it in academic apartheid. I have written on it in the miseducation of black youth in America, just to name a few times that I have addressed it in depth. We have a problem. I believe it was Brother Malcolm that said only a fool would trust his en enemy to educate his children. And yet here we are. Not only are we failing in the holistic education of our youth and not just black men, black girls, as black boys, but black girls as well. We are also failing in the proper pre uh, preparation and teaching of financial discipline, financial responsibility, business ownership, black group economics, social responsibility within the black collective, and so much more. I have talked about this for years, and I have written about it. I have developed programs. Uh, there's no doubt uh, in my mind, and there's plenty of proof. Uh, you can talk to others who have observed it, Dr. Blanchard, Dr. Um, Lad and a bunch of others who have observed. Black Man Lead is a rite of passage program designed to socialize young black boys and it works. But it has to be impl implemented and it needs to be implemented on a national level. That needs to be a national network through which we all operate and move. And um, We are looking at a situation where it is becoming increasingly bad 
increasingly worse uh, as far as the disruption in our community, the, the uh, devastation in our community, and no one seems to care. Saying, oh my God, doesn't mean you care. Saying, shaking my head, doesn't mean you care. Those are conditioned responses that are just simply thrown out there to say, wow, people who care take action. People who care get involved. People who, who care become a part of the solution. It's that simple. We need to move or we're going to find ourselves in a world of hurt like we've never seen before. We're, we're, fat, we're rapidly approaching a point in time in the U.S. where we are becoming socially and politically irrelevant. The moment that that happens and we become um, economically irrelevant, we become expendable. And that time is rapidly approaching. We are being replaced by other groups. And it's happening in no short fashion. We are going to have to put in work. With that being said, look, I'm going to get off and get ready for this interview. And I'm going to challenge each and every one of you to find a way to become involved. For those of you who have other things that you're tied up with in your own life and you don't have a way to personally get involved, support uh, groups, organizations, and individuals who are boots on the ground, hands-on, and help them be a difference maker in the communities that they're working in. If, uh, as far as the work we do at the Odyssey Project, we got Black Men Lead. Uh, we have Restoring Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is my wife working with young black girls who are dealing with trauma, everything from being trafficked, molested, raped, beaten, and so much more. So much of our work was done inside uh, the, uh, the, uh, detention centers for youth, uh, TYC, Texas Youth Commission. And we worked uh, with girls on the inside and then when they were released. There's work that needs to be done and it, we need your support. The link to support the work we do is in the description box. You can either click the link or you can give through the organization's cash app handle. On that note, I'm gonna get ready to get out of here. I just had to stop and drop in on that. I hope that you guys have an unbelievable day.